Okay, so it is Tuesday. Uh, I spent the day washing cars, spent a lot of the day up in my office yesterday. Um, so I think my plan is I'm going to move my GTI out. Um, I'm going to start working on the Subaru. I printed off a cut sheet this morning of all the underhood dimensions for the Subaru. Uh, I'm just going to make a couple measurements and I'll probably uh, show all that on a video. Um, looks to me like if you're looking at this cut sheet, what I really want to know is if the strut towers are straight. Um, so I'm thinking that this right here is this point. So I should be able to measure this over to what looks like the back bolt for the suspension on the other side. And I can get a cross measurement. You guys all remember how to do that. Um, so I'm going to take cross measurements and then I'm going to measure this strut mount to this strut mount. So it would be these two front ones across to make sure the width is right. Um, and then probably what I'm going to wind up doing is taking uh, one side at a time. So as you can see, now that I've got this front end cut off, you can see all the damage. So I'm probably going to take this. This is called an apron and it laps up and over the upper frame rail here, right? So I'm going to take this apron off of this side. I think I'm going to wind up leaving this one on, but I haven't fully decided yet. Um, this one's not terrible on this side, but I do have to come all the way back. You can see there's a kink here that like I did not plan for at all. And you can get a much better view of all of the damage on these rails. So I'm going to take the rails back probably right into here somewhere, just in front of the bolt for the subframe. So I want to leave one existing bolt for the subframe and I want to um, replace the forward bolt. So that way when I make the cut and the splice, one bolt will be new, the other one will be existing so that I know that I've got that reference point on the back side. And then when I put the new one on, the subframe will bolt to it, it'll be perfect. And I know that lengthwise it'll be good if I do that. Um, but like I said, I think this apron is going to get replaced. You can even see there's a buckle right here. So I might have to replace, yeah, there's a buckle up under here too. So I might have to replace some of this up into there as well. Um, <coughs> I, what I might wind up doing is just separating the, the strut tower on this side um, and taking the strut tower right off of this thing and cutting this back here somewhere. Although there is a little bump right there. Maybe that bump is supposed to be there. Just not quite as aggressive. Yeah, that bump is supposed to be there, but that's a crumple zone. That's why that bump's there. And it's definitely not supposed to be as kinked as bad as it is. So I'll probably wind up doing is there's an inner here. I'll probably take this, this or it's an outer like, um, like shield basically out. And then what I'll wind up doing is probably cut it right here somewhere and welding this piece back together. That's my plan, because I don't want to take it all the way back up. I kind of want to keep things forward of here, but we I have to get rid of this crushed metal. So I think that's what my plan is going to be. Um, there's going to be a lot of dissecting. Uh, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to dissect um, a lot of stuff. I might wind up. And I really want to try to put that whole front end on as like one piece. So. I know I said I want to try to do one side at a time, but I'm not 100% sure whether that, that's going to work. Um, as long as the strut towers stay where they need to be throughout all of this, we should be fine. I really, the strut towers have to stay intact when all this stuff happens. So, um, like I said, I, I might leave this apron in this side because I don't see a lot of damage on this side uh, to the apron. I might just unweld it and take the rail out and then fit the rail back in and weld the apron back on. So, well, we'll figure that out. I got some cleaning to do. I left a mess of stuff here and there. So I'm probably going to clean for five, ten minutes. And then um, I'll put the camera up um, on the glass, probably, and go from there. I'll probably measure in real time. And then as I'm cutting and welding and doing that kind of stuff and grinding, I will um, I'll put... Um, 
put a time lapse on. Okay, okay. so got my tram out. You guys all know tr this is a tram. Some of you struggled with the measuring one I put out earlier last week. This is technically called a tram. Um, and this is a measuring device that we measure frames, um, we measure in millimeters. So <clears throat> what I've got here is, I don't know if you can see the numbers on it. I'll try to put a PDF up right now. Flash, PDF. Okay. Um, and if you look, I'm gonna flash back to me. In this top corner, which should be right here where the fender mounts, okay, to this point here, which is the upper strut mount, is 1190, okay? So we're gonna set the tram up for 1190 millimeters. You guys all remember how to do that? If you can see the numbers on my tram, so right there is where we need to be. I'm gonna lock it in. 1190. Okay, I'm gonna lock them all in, and then remember the most important part of this is making sure that things are balanced, right? So I'm probably gonna have to bring this side down. Ooh, that ain't right. Mm. I'm not confused. Get to try to find something that's in the wheelhouse. That's that one right there. Yep. Surely is. Okay, so. I was way off with my estimating on which bolt hole it was. That's one thing about these, it's kind of hard because you don't really know where, what bolt it's pointing to, theoretically. So let me, uh, <clears throat> let me get the hood hinges off. I'm gonna clip out just for a sec while I take these hood hinges off. But when, I, when we get back, when you come back, I'll have these hood hinges off, all right? So, glad I took the hood hinges off. The hood hinges are definitely bent. Um, well, at least this one on this side, which is where the impact was. It's almost folded right over, I could almost not get the bolts out. So, <clears throat> and if you start looking up the side of the fender rail, got a hole here which is this one. Actually, those are still in place. I might be able to measure those. Got a bolt here, here, here. So I think it's supposed to be this one. Yeah, which is, that one right there is about dead on, right where it needs to be. I think, well, I'll do a cross measurement here. Um, this is right where it needs to be. <clears throat> I'm going this way, you'll be able to see. Let's see. Yeah, so the strut towers are dead on um, where they need to be. The only thing, I, like I said, I wanted to do was measure from these two to see if they push together. But if they had pushed together at all, pretty sure that there wouldn't be a, a correlation side to side. Something would be out side to side. But uh, so this, the crossways is right here and it looks to be a hundred or sorry, 1158. So it's a little bit shorter than what we have on there right now. Well, just loosen it up. 1150. Right there. Okay. So these are gonna be pretty even. They are kind of already, so. And this is the one. Huh, well that's way off.
So I, I put this on and I've got a much longer video. I kind of cut this off at my cross measurements. I measured, I measured this cross one across here and the number is wrong on here. I can't believe that this is twisted that much. I think the number's just wrong. So I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna put this all away and I'm gonna start dissecting um, stuff here. Probably try to get this brake piece kind of out of the way. This might have to come out, which kind of really stinks because I wasn't really planning on this, but the brake, um, the brake um, ABS control and pump is kind of in the way. Like I said, I'm gonna take this apron out on this side. I'm gonna start with this side, get the apron off first. Um, get the apron off of the strut tower and then um, figure out whether I'm gonna take the apron off of this side. This side is kind of buggered a little, so I don't know. I haven't fully decided. I will, you know, make light of it all as I'm going along, but uh, probably in a time lapse what I'm doing here and we'll go from there. But in a nutshell, that's measuring. You always wanna measure before and after. Um, you'll see me measure occasionally as I'm starting to fit things together. Um, I am gonna have to drop the subframe, which means I'm gonna have to do something with the transmission. I'm not sure yet what I'm doing with the transmission because um, it's kind of just hanging in there right now. It's sitting on the subframe. The subframe's gotta come down enough so that I can get the bolts out and make cuts around. Um, the wheels really should come off. I have to find bits and pieces. So some of the mechanical work I'm doing, think about that. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm like doing that stuff too. This is all kind of stuff you have to know how to do in this industry, so. All right. Okay, so I got the apron off this side. At this point, I'm not really sure how long that time lapse was. Um, see, it's pretty mangled now. Um, when I rip stuff apart like that, I kind of just, it's like one of those get it out, get it done type things. Um, when I do that one, I'm gonna take a little bit more care taking stuff apart, obviously. Probably gonna, like I said, cut the strut tower right out of that thing and try to just sneak both aprons up and in. Um, and see how that goes still got a lot of a lot of work here um, next next thing is I'm gonna start you know maybe I'll get this apron out too um, it is kind of buggered up be, didn't take long to get the other one off so but you can see where this had I mean, you can see that where it had torn because it pushed the car this way and then when we pulled everything back to square it kind of overlapped the metal here and you can see all this is pretty 
crunched and buggered. So I think what I'm gonna try to do is, there's a seam right there, right in this high strength cap here. What I think I'm gonna do is undo all these, okay? I'm gonna pull this little cover piece out, like I had said before, and I think I'm gonna cut this right here somewhere like maybe right on that seam right right behind where all of the all these ribs these are your crumple zones it did exactly what it was supposed to do which is good but i think i'm going to cut it behind the crumple um that way we'll keep some of the structural integrity it'll be right on this edge um looks like the strut tower kind of laps over it right there so maybe i'll cut it right where the strut tower is lapping and it'll be an easy place for me to cut the other one too um, hopefully we'll see how this goes um, it's a lot of work to do still but uh, hopefully you're seeing a good a good vantage point of what's going on here maybe I'll try to set it up uh, try to set this up somewhere else as I take this one apart uh, got less to move out of the way on this side so should be able to get this one done even faster um, and once this one's out, that'll probably be the end of this video. Um, I know I'm the last couple I did were 20 minutes long. I'm trying to avoid those. I know they're kind of a pain in the butt to watch. Um, I'd rather do shorter videos, more of them, keep your interest a little bit better. But um, let me see what I can do for this one. Let me try to mount this camera somewhere else so that you can kind of see. It's too bad, I, you know, Amazon is kind of on the fritz as far as ordering anything that's not essential at this point, or else I'd order uh, <clears throat> some sort of a head mount or something. I probably almost make something out of something I have, but I've got the cart and I've put, I've put it in, I've put this thing in the cart before, so maybe that's what I'll just do. Kind of mount it right here somewhere and hope it's good. All right. <clears throat> 